Welcome to all. My name is Dorothy McGuire, and I'm co-president of the League of Women Voters of Elmhurst, along with Jan Dorner. On behalf of the Downers Grove, Woodridge Lyle, and Elmhurst Local League chapters hosting this afternoon's event, I thank you for joining us for the DuPage County District 2 Candidate Forum. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization. We encourage the informed and active participation of citizens in government. The League works to increase understanding of the major public policy issues and influences public policy through education and advocacy. Our moderator this afternoon to start is Barb Lyman's. She serves on the board of the Le League of Women Voters of Wheaton and resides outside District 2 DuPage in West Chicago. She also currently serves on the national planning team of the National Institute for Civil Discourse and is working with the News Literacy Project to develop a national program on myths and disinformation for adults. Barb also plans and coordinates the monthly Civic Awareness Series at Cantigny Park, held in conjunction with the McCormick Foundation. As a retired civics psychology teacher, she works closely with the teachers in the Wheaton Service area to inspire and encourage students to engage in our democracy. Thank you all for coming. Good afternoon. It is an honor for me to be moderating the Democratic Candidates Forum for County Board District 2, which is being hosted by the League of Women Voters of Downers Grove, Woodridge, Lyle, and the League of Women Voters of Elmhurst. Throughout its history, the League of Women Voters has been providing opportunities for candidates seeking public office to speak directly to voters through forums. It continues to be the policy of the League to hold forums for those candidates in contested races. I would like to begin by reviewing some of the League ground rules for candidate forums. All candidates attending today have signed and returned the ground rules by the deadline established in the invitation. These rules specify the format, time limits, and other rules related to the conduct of the forum. I will be responsible for enforcing these rules. The candidates will begin in alphabetical order with their opening statements. They will alternate the order in which they answer questions. And after the question portion of the forum, each candidate will give a closing statement. Each candidate will be given one minute for their opening statement, one minute to respond to each question, and one minute to make a closing statement. The questions have been gathered from the sponsoring leagues, the public, and from this audience. A panel of experienced members of the League of Women Voters has reviewed the questions submitted and carefully screened questions for appropriateness for the office and to avoid duplication for tonight's events. This forum today is a candidate forum, not a debate forum. Candidates are expected to accurately represent the facts and their responses reflect their own views and opinions. The League of Women Voters is not responsible for the accuracy of the statements made by the candidates. It is the responsibility of the public, news media, and opposing candidates to fact check statements made by candidates if necessary. The event today is being recorded. The League claims copyright ownership of any recording or transcript. The forum will be posted in its entirety on the host League websites, social media platforms, and the Illinois Voter Guide. Any other use of the forum recording requires the express written approval of League. Audio and vi video must be broadcast unedited and in its entirety except by media reporting on events. Finally, I want to emphasize how grateful we are to these candidates who are not only willing to serve in office, but who agreed to be here this afternoon. Thank you. So let us begin with opening statements. Candidate Chaplin, we'll begin with you. You have one minute. Oh. Great, thank you so much, Barb, and thanks to the League of Women Voters for hosting this uh, forum and everything you do. So my name is Liz Chaplin, and I've been representing the people of DuPage County for two decades. I first got involved in politics uh, working with federal, state, and local governments to clean up toxic chemicals found in our well water. I was appointed to, to the DuPage Water Commission where I served eight years uh, where I fought to clean up and stabilize their finances. In my nine years on the county board, I have led the effort to clean up county government and defend essential services that people rely on. 
I have an outstanding reputation of serving my constituents, addressing their concerns, and helping solve their problems. My leadership was recognized on the board in 2020 when I was appointed chair of the Finance Committee and DuPage County Board Chair Pro Tem. These difficult times call for experienced, strong, reliable, and honest leadership. And those are the qualities that I bring to the table. Thank and you. I know that with your help, we can continue to uh, build a better DuPage. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Garcia. One thank minute. you, Barb, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for having all of us here today. Um, my name is Paula Deacon Garcia, and I am asking to be reelected to the County Board District 2. Uh, a little bit about me is I live in Lyle. I've lived there most of my life. I came there when I was six weeks old, and I've uh, lived about four houses away from the house that I grew up in. So um, I've been a, mem uh, a, a person who lives in DuPage County for almost all of my life. Uh, what I brought to the Villa County Board when I was elected in 2020, I had 21 years of experience working for the Village of Lyle, working as a facilitator in the Community Developments Department, working on building permits with developers, and I brought all that experience. I was a 10-year certified floodplain manager, and so I've helped a lot of people who have been dealing with the stormwater issues in their area. And one thing, when I came there, I said, oh my gosh, this is a budget of $475 million. And one thing I'm going to steal from somebody, I have to stop, is that I'm a paycheck to paycheck family, and so I know what it's like to actually budget to make the best budget possible. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Garcia. Candidate Vesquez, you have one minute. Thank you for having us, Barb, and the Women's League of Voters. My name is Marianne Vasquez, and I'm running for County Board District 2. My run for County Board District 2 was born out of running for Downers Grove Township Supervisor. I knocked on so many doors, and I heard so many people say the same things. Once you have heard that person at the door say that they are concerned about our mental health programs or they are concerned about elder care or public transit, you then feel a responsibility to step up once again and run. So I am running because I want to follow through on promises that were made at the door. I do have the drive, energy, and ambition to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Yu. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for today's forum. I'm Ina Yu. I plan to pursue fiscal accountability and focus on the issues of gun safety, social services, and the implementation of DEI in county government. I earned my law degree and my master's in social work from Washington University in St. Louis. I'm a legal aid attorney representing people disadvantaged by poverty, including senior citizens, veterans, and immigrants, and specializing in domestic violence and family law litigation. I currently work part-time for Catholic Charities Legal Assistance, but have been volunteering most of my time for social causes. I've served as chair for the Elmhurst chapter of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense, also volunteering with the League of Women Voters, the Elmhurst Senior Citizens Commission, and other organizations. I live and act on my values in both my work and in my community, and now wish to advocate for residents at the DuPage County level. I live in South Elmhurst with my husband David and our two young sons, Theodore and Alexander. Thank you. Thank you. And now it's time for the first question. Candidate Garcia will begin with you. The federal government defines housing as affordable when rent plus utilities are no more than 30% of the occupant's monthly income. In DuPage County, about 30% of households pay more than this toward housing and are cost burden, which means they are making tough choices between spending their income on housing or on other essentials such as food, transportation, and health care. What role should the county play in addressing the discrepancy between the needs for affordable housing and the current supply? Thank you. 
Um, this is something that I've really been working hard on uh, with our community services department. Uh, I've had many conversations with them. And uh, unfortunately, what it comes down to is that we need developers who want to actually build something like that, like that in the, the county. Um, it's, it really falls under the purview of the Illinois Department of Housing Authority to actually get us money for that. Our community services can help so much. So I've been working, it becomes a municipality to municipality kind of a uh, conversation. So uh, as chair of the Intergovernmental Committee, I've been talking to all the different municipalities that come and I'm trying to get them to work because if we can find just like 3.2 acres of, of a place that wants to be re re redeveloped like the one in Elgin, we can get affordable housing here in DuPage County. But unfortunately we need to get developers who want to do that for all ages. I personally have a son who is living in my basement and I would love him to get affordable housing here in DuPage County. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Vasquez. Thank you. Um, in terms of affordable housing, we're kind of looking at two things. One is that short-term affordable housing. That is not what I'm going to be addressing here, but I think I'm going to be addressing long term because that's where I believe we are going to have the biggest problems in the future. The number one thing we can do is affect it through zoning. Allow someone perhaps with a large house to be able to divide it up into a triplex. Then that then becomes three different places that someone could live. So it does open up availability. Something else that we could consider is allowing a family with a large backyard to maybe put a tiny home on there for their elderly parent. I uh, spoke with... Um, I'll ask you to bring your to come into a closed. I was just going to say, I was speaking with the property, ma the man who property manages my property, and he actually buys things through governments and through foundations, refurbishes them, and then Thank people you. are able to buy them. Thank you. Candidate you. The majority of my legal clients are paying more than 30% of their income for housing and are struggling to make ends meet. So I'm very familiar with this issue and actually have made it one of the primary concerns of my campaign. When I talk to DuPage residents at their doors, I've heard many times their concerns regarding affordable housing and the ability to, to attract new young families into the area and the difficulty of more and more seniors to remain in their home and community. So it affects both ends of the spectrum. Consequently, I strongly believe the county should play a large role in addressing housing needs. There are many options that the county could explore. I would seek the creation of an affordable housing committee or working group to study best practices and look into establishing IGAs to partner with municipalities on this issue. I have done some research on affordable housing trusts and other options to offer, such as accessory dwelling units. I would be thrilled to look into these practices and programs if elected to the county board. Thank you. Candidate Chaplin. Thank you. Um, affordable housing is a very complicated issue from finding land to construction cost to the attitude of not in my backyard, right? So there's a lot of things that elected officials have to deal with when we're talking about um, affordable housing. Currently, Member Garcia and I are working on having the county zoning ordinance change to allow accessory dwelling units, which is a smaller independent residential dwelling on a unit, on a residential unit. It's a detached single family home. This would allow for a family member or any individual to live in DuPage County at an affordable price. Now, it's not major, but it's a starting point. We also need to elect individuals that, make, that want to make affordable housing a priority. Construction costs have skyrocketed, so offering incentives to builders or finding a property piece of land and donating it, um, these are all types of uh, programs we can put in place to assist with affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with <coughs> candidate Vasquez. Okay. DuPage County has recently expressed 
its opposition to a freight railway merger involving Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern, citing concerns about safety, traffic, and adequate infrastructure. If the merger proceeds, what concessions from the aforementioned companies would you recommend to forestall potential problems in DuPage County? You have one minute. To forestall problems, you would have to address a few things which are somewhat being addressed already. You could take the trains and have them go through the towns and villages at off-peak hours when the congestion is worse, perhaps overnight. But from my research, it sounds like that is an option. Maybe also have more rigid guidelines and safety procedures at the railroad crossings would help as well. And I know many people are concerned about noise. Perhaps in the future, developing some type of noise drop. But outside of that, I could not see anything else that anyone could do. Thank you. Candidate, you, you, you have one minute. I, like so many others, have major concerns about public safety, the traffic delays, and inadequate infrastructure should this merger occur. It would have serious impacts on residents and businesses in the northern part of DuPage County. For example, communities like Elgin would see nearly triple the freight train activity. Thankfully, there is a coalition, the Coalition to Stop Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern, which has already addressed the issues of concessions when it filed a list of conditions back in February of 2022. Uh, I, the coalition recommended multiple recommendations, but one concession that I strongly support is providing grade separated crossings, which are essentially underpasses or overpasses, to reduce traffic and ensure bicycle and pedestrian safety. This is also necessary to make sure that our emergency responders can get to residents in need quickly. Elmhurst actually has a rail underpass and it has been essential to our community. And lastly, I really strongly believe that concessions must include preventing potential ecological consequences as well. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Chaplin, well, same question. Thank you. So as a member of the DuPage Railroad Safety Council, this is a very important issue to me. In March of 2022, the DuPage County Board opposed the merger and joined the coalition to stop the Canadian Pacific and Kansas Southern Railroad merger. Um, this merger could impact about 150,000 DuPage residents uh, by tripling the number of freight trains coming through our communities. The merger will block uh, traffic at grade crossings uh, which could lead to delays in ambulance and fire services and um, people getting to the hospitals. A big safety concern is that when freight trains are um, blocking passengers to get to the metro train, which leads to people dodging between the trains to get to their metro train, which we know is a recipe for disaster. DuPage County has committed $100,000 to the coalition. Um, I would not make any mitigation changes. I would leave that up to the experts and take their recommendations as far as mitigation changes go. But it's a very important and serious issue for DuPage County. Thank you. And candidate Garcia, same question. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to have to agree with Member Chaplin here. We, what we have as, as the county board as of right now, we've actually agreed with the coalition and we became a part of the coalition to actually be against uh, this merger. Uh, more trains coming into these areas is going to be a tragedy for everyone in the area. And I think that uh, one thing that we have to be sure of is that we continue working strongly with that coalition to make sure our voices are heard and to work with, uh, if it does get passed, to actually work along with uh, the coalition and with the communities that are affected to find ways. I think I would agree with uh, Ms. Yu here uh, that I think some of the areas could actually have some areas that where you could have bridges built and some tunnels built. I know we had one built in uh, Downers Grove in our district that actually saved a lot of lives. And I, I think that we should follow that same example uh, along that route. Thank you. Thank you. Next question will begin with candidate you. 
DuPage County received more than $161 million in federal funds through the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, the CARES Act. DuPage County established a local government COVID-19 reimbursement program to provide some federal funds for DuPage cities, towns, and villages. Recognize the increased expenses of local governments incurred when they provided services during the pandemic. What financial and other support relative to COVID-19 is still needed for residents of DuPage County? So I really actually believe that um, businesses at this point in time are still in need of help. Um, I think that we need to continue to reinvest in DuPage and work closely with Choose DuPage, which is the main uh, partnership between the county and the economic uh, business community, and to continue to support businesses, revitalize our community, make sure that we shore up our revenues, and bring in more businesses into our economy. I would really like to see also um, the revitalization of minority-owned and women-owned businesses in particular, and will do my very best if I elected to the county board to support those businesses. Thank you. Candidate Chaplin. Could you please repeat the question? Sure. DuPage County received more than $161 million in federal funds through the CARES Act. Mm -hmm. DuPage County established a local government COVID-19 reimbursement program to provide some federal funds for DuPage cities towns and villages, recognizing the increased expenses of local governments that were incurred as they provided services during the pandemic. What financial and other support relative to COVID-19 is still needed for residents of DuPage County? Okay, thank you so much. So I think one of the biggest impacts we've seen of the COVID-19 virus is the mental health crisis in DuPage County. And um, we've seen that transpire into substance abuse as well. So we have a mental health, we have mental health crisis and opioid crisis in proportions that we've never seen. So I feel that um, investing more money into our mental health and our substance abuse programs is probably one of the uh, most needed resources right now coming out of the pandemic. It affects everybody, children, young adults, middle-aged people and our seniors who you know were isolated for so long so really the mental health issue and the opioid crisis i believe was where we really need to concentrate our funding thank you candidate garcia one minute thank you so much and you took my answer <laughs> um I am on the, also on the uh, DuPage County Health Department Board, and we had a discussion about this the other night. Um, there's been two pandemics. There's been a pandemic of COVID-19, and then there's a pandemic of mental health issues. Um, suicide right now is at one of its highest rates. And so I've been working with our behavioral health department at the health department to try to, to see what we can do to go forward. And the one thing that we're gonna be bringing forward is a crisis resident unit so that we can have people who who are suffering from mental health and at the same time doing perhaps a misdemeanor crime will be taken there to get the help that they need and get to where they need to do so we can help them with their mental health issues instead of charging them with a crime. That is something we have to be taken care of. There's also kind of, uh, there's many other issues that we need to be doing. And I, again, I think small businesses are still hurting also. So I do think that we need to actually focus on that. And I can continue talking that, but they're telling me to stop. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Candidate Vesquez. I would agree with Ina that um, small businesses are continuing to struggle. You see it everywhere you go. You see business going out of business. There was just a restaurant recently in Downers Grove that went out of business. I think focusing on efforts to increase economic stability and to support local businesses, both incoming and existing, are very important for rebuilding DuPage. So, um, I would say focus on building up the economics of um, local businesses. And as a side note, you can do that with public transit. 
that is affordable and accessible, which is part of my platform, is that people are not able to get through all parts of DuPage. So support that and you will support economic recovery. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the next question, we'll start with candidate Chaplin. Each year, the DuPage County Board provides a budget survey to DuPage County residents for input, feedback during the budget planning cycle, May through November each year. What recommendations do you have for increasing resident engagement on budget planning and input across DuPage County? Thank you, Barb. Appreciate that question. So as the finance uh, chair, I have um, reached out to staff. We did a budget survey last year and we had some very good comments from the public about how to improve our budget survey. So what we're going to do, um, we hope to be bringing forward, uh, going out and bringing a professional vendor in to help us with our survey so that we can have broader outreach to our constituents and um, use that information in planning our budget uh, going forward. We used to, the board used to go out and do um, budget, oh, what do you call them? We come out to Elmhurst and give a budget presentation, but we had one or two people in the audience. So we've, we've moved from going out doing the presentations to our budget survey, so we're hoping by bringing in a professional um, vendor to help us prepare our survey and reach out to the residents is the best way to go for that. So thank you. Candidate Garcia. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm going to agree with, uh, with Chaplin here in terms of our survey that we put out last time uh, needed a few tweaks to be improved and we're looking forward to making those tweaks to make sure that we get as much uh, clear uh, information from our residents as we can. One thing I would love to do is uh, by district by district, um, and I, I believe you're saying you've done this in the past, but I think it needs to be redone, is to have meetings in our districts to actually talk to the residents of our districts about things that they are actually concerned about, one of them being the budget and the best ways that we could possibly use it, either by giving us ideas that they're interested in or by giving us some feedback on exactly what we've been doing on the board. So that was what's something that I would be actually pushing for to be doing uh, district by district on the county board. Thank you. Candidate Vesquez. Well, I like that idea of meeting with people in town halls, Paula. I thought about doing that as well. But it's really difficult to get local, local residents to really engage in local politics. We could tell you that all the time. It's difficult to get them to fill out that questionnaire. I think you, you have to do a multiple of things. I think you have to canvas, phone bank, whatever you can to drive them in to really show up. Otherwise, you will have two or three people at a meeting. Um, but I still think it's worth the effort, and I still believe that that's the way we need to go to really, try, uh, to really find out what it is that the residents of DuPage would like us to do with the budget. Thank you. Candidate you. So this is actually one of my campaign pillars, which is to actively listen and engage with community residents on an ongoing basis throughout my term on the county board if elected. I plan to be accessible to all residents, and I did this before during my aldermanic race in Elmhurst where I, I went on I went and walked and knocked on over 800 doors, really trying to listen to residents and their concerns. And so this is something that I really truly wish to do again on the county level. Uh, I've previously asked, um, suggested doing office hours and other kinds of meetings so that residents can come and talk about their concerns freely. And I think this will truly increase resident engagement uh, for planning the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Garcia, we'll begin this question round with you. Recently, the county board discussed the possibility of permitting the sale of marijuana in unincorporated areas of the county. What is your position on the placement of dispensaries on the border of local municipalities that rejected establishing dispensaries? 
Okay, my opinion is that if it's unincorporated, that's under the jurisdiction of the DuPage County Board. And therefore, the dispensaries can be located there. I believe I'm answering the question correctly. Um, because uh, that's what business is. It's basically being able to allow, if the zoning rec allows it, to be able to put your business where, where it wants to be located. Um, what's going to make a business successful is actually um, how they run their business. So I have no problem with that. Uh, quite honestly, going back to our last question about mental health, um, dispensaries are something people are actually needing at this point in time to kind of help them with their mental health issues. And so it's more of a medical issue sometimes. And I believe that that's something that we should all be allowing into Illinois. It is legal in the state of Illinois and therefore I think should be allowed in unincorporated DuPage County. Candidate Vasquez. I think uh, putting dispensaries in unincorporated areas near um, areas that have rejected it or villages or that have rejected it, it's a brilliant idea. It, uh, from a sales point of view, you're meeting a need in the community. That is the jurisdiction of DuPage County Board, so why not place it there and meet the needs of the community that lives around that dispensary, but are not allowed to get it in their backyard. Candidate you? I'm sorry, would you please repeat the question for me? Recently, the county board discussed the possibility of permitting the sale of marijuana in unincorporated areas of the county. What is your position on the placement of dispensaries on the border of local municipalities that rejected establishing dispensaries? So as it is legal in the state of Illinois, I also agree that to place dispensaries in unincorporated areas is perfectly valid. However, I think I would also take the extra step of contacting those municipalities that declined to have those dispensaries in their uh, communities to make sure that uh, we didn't overstep on their boundaries. Um, but to still provide it in those unincorporated areas. I think also this is a way that we can support small businesses because I know that uh, th the dispensaries are doing very well. Thank you. And Canada Chaplin. Yes, thank you. And um, I would agree with uh, candidate you, she took my talking point. You know, it's very important that the county has a good working relationship with our municipalities because we work very closely together. So definitely I would reach out, I would have the county reach out to that municipality and let them know that we were planning to put a, a marijuana dispensary there. Um, I do agree that marijuana is legal and we should be allowed to um, sell it in the unincorporated areas of DuPage County. And um, actually, I am the county board member that had asked this issue to be brought forward again for consideration. And we do know that it will help, uh, it will generate businesses, and it will bring in uh, much needed tax revenue to uh, DuPage County. So again, working hand in hand with that municipality uh, and letting them know that we're going to put that dispensary there. That's what I would do. So thank you. Candidate Vesquez. As of late 2021, opioid overdoses in DuPage County were up by 17%. As a member of the county board, what strategies would you support or suggest to combat this problem? There are um, a number of strategies, I would say, that we could expand on Nar Narcan education. Um, I would see it that you could also, you could expand on the current programs, but I think the most important thing is making people aware that they even exist. Because I find that people aren't aware of what the county always has to offer. So I believe that marketing to people or letting people know in their neighborhoods and communities would be beneficial. Thank you. Candidate you? 
So Narcan is obviously the first strategy to prevent opioid overdose and death. But after administering Narcan, there needs to be rapid connection to treatment, um, wraparound services, uh, something called harm reduction services. Um, I actually took a look at the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority, where they have research, I think dating back to 2017, with regard to best practices on how to prevent uh, opioid overdose and death. And one of the best practices is immediate access to treatment not just the Narcan, which revives an individual, but also um, recovery coaches and temporary housing for people uh, who um, have been unable to enter treatment, social services, again, wraparound services, and finally, medication-assisted treatment, such as methadone for people who need them clinically. Thanks. Candidate Chaplin. Could you please repeat that question? As of late 2021, opioid overdoses in DuPage County were up by 17%. As a member of the county board, what strategies would you support, suggest, to combat this problem? Okay, thank you. So the opioid overdoses, yes, seem to be continuing in DuPage. We have a HOPE task force that we've put 100,000 in, um, in 2020, and I believe we're putting $200,000 in in 2022. Uh, I don't think that's quite enough funding um, for the opioid crisis, and we do get in a, other grant funding. Um, and what the county has done with that is given it to our nonprofits that deal with um, drug abuse and opioid crisis. And then those um, entities reach out to uh, the people that have had these overdoses. Um, but I think the real issue is what is causing people to use these opioids? And I think getting to the stem of the problem, which a lot of times we see it's mental health. People are in pain and they are using these um, drugs to, to um, heal themselves. So I think if we can get to the issue of what is causing people to turn to these drugs, that that would help prevent um, the overdoses. Thank you. Candidate Garcia. Thank you. I'm just going to continue off of what Liz was just saying. Um, mental health is, is one of the hugest reasons uh, for why we have uh, the opioid uh, issue that we have right now. So what we need is the social services available. So again, we're talking about having uh, counselors available to talk to people and to be able to uh, make sure people get to the services they require. I think right now there's sometimes a wait to see a psychiatrist or a counselor for uh, more than months. Um, and so we need to make sure that that is reduced so that people who are crying out for help get the help they need. I know we have a 988 number com coming soon which uh, will be able to actually call and you can talk to somebody on the phone if you are in need. So that's something that we can do. I've been dealing, working with Just of DuPage and finding out that the, what they're doing in our, uh, in our correctional center in terms of dealing with the people in the correctional center. Um, and they have counselors there and social service workers there and they're able to help people so that we can actually stop the cycle. Thank you. Thank you. As somewhat of a follow-up question, we'll begin with um, candidate Yu. Would you support the Substance Abuse Treatment Center Haymarket proposed in Itasca? Why or why not? I'm sorry, repeat the question, sure. please. Would you support the Substance Abuse Treatment Center Haymarket proposed in Itasca? Why or why not? So I don't know much about the proposed uh, treatment center in Haymarket or Haymarket, but I will say that for any substance abuse treatment center, I would be in favor of it. I think um, substance, substance abuse addiction um, is a really important issue that needs to be addressed on all levels uh, for residents of DuPage County. Um, I strongly believe that community-based healthcare and local service organizations really know what's happening in their own communities. And so if ITASCA is planning on doing one for substance abuse treatment, then I'm definitely for it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Candidate Chaplin? Yes, thank you. So as a member of the DuPage County Board, I signed on in support of the Hay Market <clears throat> treatment facility here in DuPage County. Um, it's so important that people have a place to go to receive the proper treatment so that they can get better um, and, and thrive again. Um, but you know, we took a lot of pushback for signing on to the hay market. Uh, it was not a popular decision, um, but it was for me the right decision to sign on and support the hay market. Thank, Thank you. you. Candidate Garcia. Thank you. Uh, I've been following along uh, with the hay market uh, uh, development uh, in Itasca. And, you know, I know there was a lot of concerns by the residents in terms of traffic and in terms of uh, emergency vehicles coming in and out. And I think that they have actually uh, addressed all of them. Um, it came down to a decision by the uh, Itasca board, their, their village board, and they denied it. So now it's in the court system. And unfortunately, we as a county don't have anything to say about it, except that, again, I'm going back to everything I've said today, is that we need more services for mental health. So I am wholeheartedly in favor of Haymarket becoming a part of DuPage County. Thank you. Candidate Vescas. Um, I am wholeheartedly in favor of the Haymarket um, Center as well. And I recall from watching the meetings, I may have even been there, it, the county board did receive a lot of um, pushback on locating it in Itasca. But uh, it, needs, it needs a home. It's, uh, it needs a home. We need it if we're having um, opioid I mean, I've got the rise. It's, it's, we just need it. We need a center. And it sounds like the issues that the residents were concerned about have already gotten handled. So thank, thank you. you. I'm going to shift gears a little bit and ask the question that will begin with candidate Chaplin. What green environmental policies are important for DuPage County to pursue in addition to those currently in place? Green environmental policies. Oh, wow, that's a, that's a big one. In one minute. In one minute. Um, you know, the county really has done a fairly good job um, with implementing green, um, green policies. Um, our buildings are slowly being converted um, to more sustainable um, buildings. We have um, lights, LED lights, and lights that will uh, turn on and off with uh, activity. We have put green or uh, white roofs on our buildings. We have a, one building with a little garden. Um, we're, turning, we're turning over our fleet to um, slowly to electronic uh, vehicles. They're going to be putting together a master plan of how to convert our gas fleet into um, electronic uh, vehicles. We have... Um, we don't, have, okay, thank you. We don't have a lot of money in our environmental uh, committee to uh, you know, enact a lot of policies. So those are also done through stormwater and uh, public, uh, thank you. public works and development. Thank, thank you. you. Candidate Garcia. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna continue with that. One thing I've been fighting for on the DuPage County Board is electric vehicle changeover on our fleet and also getting EV chargers in our county campus and all over DuPage County. Because if we don't have the EV chargers and we bring the electric cars in, there's nowhere to charge them, no one's gonna buy them. I mean, it's just this, this terrible circle. So we have to have all of the infrastructure in place so that we can actually have a successful time of getting away from gas guzzling oil vehicles. Uh, that's one thing I've been doing. I have been working, um, I'm not on the, elect uh, the uh, 
environmental committee, but I go every time. Um, I, I know that Liz here is the vice chair, and I go every time because it is so important to me. So I'm actually looking there. I know there has been a nice donation of, I believe, $25,000 to put solar arrays on one of the buildings. So we're grateful for that. Anybody wants to get more, we'd be happy to have it. Um, but we're looking forward to doing more on our buildings. Thank you. Candidate Vesquez. Well, I love it whenever Paula talks about those electric, those electric uh, vehicles and having the, um, the powering stations. We do need to create that. I think that's the number one priority um, going forward. Thanks. Thank you. Candidate you. I really appreciate this question because I really care about eco-friendly practices at the county level. So I understand that the Forest Preserve District has been doing an amazing thing where they have a uh, soon to be net zero building. And I would really like to see more of our county buildings also being the same way, uh, whether that be with solar energy or having green roofs um, and also just less reliance on fossil fuels uh, for our entire uh, transportation and construction fleets. Um, finally, I would really like to see a policy at the county level to reduce single use plastics. Thanks. Thank you. Next question. And it will begin with um, candidate Garcia. Moving forward, what is the biggest challenge facing DuPage County as Illinoisans recover from the pandemic? What solution or strategy do you believe will be most effective in helping us achieve a new normal? Oh, that is a really hard question. A new normal. Um, again, as I said, I'm on the health department board and uh, the numbers are going up again. So I think the new normal is going to be uh, kind of what was described there. Um, in terms of economic, not, I, can't, I will answer that in a second, but mostly in terms of the way we live day-to-day -day lives, we're going to have to make sure that we are actually prepared. So like if the numbers go up high and we get into a high phase, you want to like, you want to prepare, you want to wear masks, you want to be careful. Uh, it's almost like if you have a frost warning out. If there's a frost warning out, you wear a winter hat, you wear the gloves, you protect your skin. This is how we're going to have to do normal about how we live our lives. And once we get to that point where we can live our lives, the economy is going to come back because we're actually going to be out and about and people won't be nervous. But I don't think we have to be actually talking to people. If they're wearing a mask, that's because they have a reason to wear a mask. They're either immunocompromised or they have some reason to be afraid of perhaps catching, okay. Thank I didn't you. get to the economic, but okay. <laughs> Candidate Vasquez? What was the question again? <laughs> Moving forward, what is the biggest challenge DuPage County faces as Illinoisans recover from the pandemic? What solutions, strategies do you believe will be most effective in helping us achieve a new normal? I would probably say education continuing to do the educational outreach. Uh, DuPage County has been very good with their educational outreach and reaching out to people in terms of vaccines and so forth and testing. I think that the, um, the virus is going to be here for a while. So we have to start to learn to live with it and support our local businesses and support the local economy because this is not going away anytime soon. But I think as long as we continue to have continued communication with DuPage residents, it will help us transition to our new normal. Candidate Yu. Uh, in responding to this question, I am thinking back to what the DuPage County Board did recently, which was to allocate $10.6 million to the DuPage Foundation for food insecurity and housing security and mental health treatment. And so I think um, the pandemic obviously showed us very clearly how at risk and how vulnerable people, um, the residents in DuPage are and um, can be. So I, I would really like to take a look more to see if we could allocate more funds um, for residents uh, in that respect. And particularly with mental health, you know, I haven't talked about mental health yet either. Uh, I'm sorry, yet, uh, unlike some of my other um, members on the board, but I, 
I truly think that mental health is also a really big issue that needs to be addressed. And finally, I would like to mention that in this new normal, we also need to really take a look at gun safety because mental health treatment is connected to the gun violence that's happening in our communities. Thank you. Candidate Chaplin. Thank you. So coming out of the pandemic, there are critical needs that still must be met. And we talked a lot about a lot of these things already today. You know, we talked about addressing affordable housing, and then we have homelessness. We've talked about the mental health, the mental health and the opioid crisis. We've talked about, you know, training, education, training tomorrow's workforce, you know, today. We um, taking on um, the environment, climate change. You know, we have a lot of, we've seen the, um, how the pandemic has hurt minorities. So, you know, making sure that DuPage County is a just community for all. I mean, these are all important issues that are coming out of the pandemic that we have seen. And, um, you know, we're gonna have to work very hard to address all of these issues going into the future, and I cannot address all of them in one minute, but, but we do have critical needs that are still gonna have to be met coming out of this pandemic. Thank you. Last question for you this afternoon. What will you do to reach out to board members, both in and out of your party, to improve collaboration and reach solutions that are in the best interest of residents of DuPage County? Candidate Vesquez, we'll start with you. I was, um, I was in retail management <laughs> uh, for many years. And I also managed sales staffs at different organizations. And the first thing one would always do is get to know your team. Know who's there, know how they work, know how they function. That way you start developing the relationship and you can take away any blocks to communication. I maybe have one type of communication style, you might have another. If, if we can start working to understand one another, I think that some of the blocks that we have on the county board or that have taken place we're going to be able to work together. And if you can find the common value that they share, but you only can do that if you sit down one-on-one -on -one and get to know them. Thank you. Candidate Uyu. As a domestic violence and family law litigator, part of my job was to communicate directly and negotiate with abusive spouses or partners who were the opposing party in the court case. So I'm accustomed to dealing with high emotion, contentious situations, and I know how to communicate civilly and effectively in a courtroom, in a judge's chambers, or at the negotiating table. It was my practice to listen to both sides, to deal with both facts and evidence, but it was also my job to push forward my client's agenda to achieve those good results. So I will I plan to bring those same skills to the county board. And I also recognize that while I am results oriented, I recognize the importance of patience and building relationships, civility, and respect for others, even across the political divide. Candidate Chaplin. Thank you. So I've been on the county board, I'm finishing up my nine years, starting my, my ninth year. Um, and for a while, I was the only Democrat on the board. And I, you know, I learned, I met all of my Republican, Republican colleagues, and we have, you know, a very good relationship. But something I did um, two years ago when the Democrats took control of the board, myself and the vice chair sat down and we uh, created committees. And we picked, um, the committee assignments. So what we did, what I thought was important was to have a Democratic chair and a Republican vice chair of a committee or a Republican chair and a Democratic vice chair of the committee. This way we are forced to work together and find common ground. I also um, run the finance committee. And I do believe in respecting everyone at the county. Um, I do not 
When people talk, I do not interrupt, and I treat everybody with respect, and I encourage discussion. And so I hate to that interrupt you. you. To I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Garcia. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that everyone who's ever worked in an office situation is aware of how politics works. Um, if you're in the office, you learn to deal with all kinds of personalities, and you may not always agree, but you are kind and you are professional. And I bring, I have brought that to the county board. You have to treat everyone with professionalism, no matter what the discussion is. And if you don't decide the same way, you decide, whoever, what the majority is, that's what vote counts. And you get up after that and you continue to treat each other with professionalism, professionalism and kindness. So I absolutely am in favor of talking to everyone. I have had great discussions. I actually have just had a call with somebody from the other side just the other day, and we're working on a couple of issues together. And, and, and you will find that if you concentrate on the issues and less on the politics, you get more done, and it's less drama. Thank you. Thank you. It's now time for your closing one-minute statement. And candidate, you will start with you. Thank you. So thank you again to the League of Women Voters for having us today and for the audience. My campaign is all about service and accountability and community. I am committed to public service and have demonstrated that in my legal career and in the various boards I serve, including the Senior Citizens Commission, the Elmhurst History Museum, and Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense. I simply want to improve all people's lives in DuPage and to connect people to available resources. I am committed to accountability because I believe that every elected official should serve with integrity and that is my plan and my promise. I also am committed to community, building safer communities from gun violence with common sense, life-saving programs and making DuPage a welcoming place for everyone to live and work regardless of race, gender or sexual orientation and listening to listening to and engaging with residents so that we can all participate in the county process. So thank you again, and remember to vote on or before June 28, and remember to vote for Ina Yu for District 2. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Candidate Chaplin, you have one minute. Thank you so much. Just again, thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. It's very important to have our public informed on the candidates that are running. You know, government is here to serve the people. If we're not providing things like food, shelter, transportation, what are we doing? Um, and that, I really think I have a proven track record over the last 20 years of advocating on behalf of the DuPage County residents. So I really love being on the county board. I love working with my constituents. And I love working on solving those problems. So I really hope, I think, that with your help, you know, like I said in the beginning, uh, that we can work together to continue, you know, to just build a better DuPage. So thank you very much. Thank you. Candidate Garcia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Barb, and to the League of Women Voters uh, for letting us speak today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I came to the county board with no, uh, no other political experience, but I came with was community involvement experience. So basically I came with uh, working for a municipality and then also working for a community groups. Uh, one of the things I'm still doing is I'm chair of the Lyle Township Food Pantry uh, Gardens where we provide food to all of the uh, food insecure people in the Lyle Township area. So what I brought there is a caring considerateness to the county board. And I have found that every issue is important on the county board. This is why I attend every single board, every single committee meeting. I take notes at everything. And I'm able to make the best decision based on the facts. That's one thing that I absolutely work on, is making sure that the facts are followed and that we are, that we are following all of the correct information. So thank you for your support to date. And thank you. I'm hoping you'll vote for Paula Deacon Garcia for District 2. Doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you'll all join me in thanking the candidates for one being more, here this more. afternoon. One oh, oh, I'm more. so sorry. <laughs> it is okay. People never know. Candidate Vesquez, have an extra Damn. five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew that wasn't true. <laughs> um, 
Thank you uh, to the Women's League of Voters for having us. Um, I would say, vote for me. I do create an energy around my campaign. I've got uh, youth engaged in local politics. They're working with me. That's no small task to be able to engage people that are young. And they're staying with me. I would like to continue to engage more and more youth. We need them for the future of DuPage. I would uh, bring my, my ability to be able to speak across the aisle, go to a door, and win people over. Um, I think these things are important at the base of doing anything moving forward on the county board. Plus, I do have a lot of energy and drive that keep me going forward. So, thank you. Vote for Marianne, too, on DuPage <laughs> County Board, too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now, please join me in thanking the candidates for being here this afternoon. Our democracy thrives when all of us are engaged. Attending or watching a candidate forum is an excellent way to be empowered to join discussions on local issues and make your voice heard on election day. We hope that each and every one of you will vote and inspire your family, friends, and neighbors to do the same so that all will express their preference on the direction and policy of the county board by voting for the candidates of their choice on June 28th. Information on how and when to vote can be found at the IllinoisVoterGuide.org, your local League of Women Voter website, or your local county election commission website. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>